Hey everybody, it's Corey with Ascend Smarter Intervention, and we are so excited because this month, October, is Dyslexia Awareness Month. And dyslexia is so near and dear to our hearts. And so we wanted to share four common myths that we hear all the time around dyslexia and just take a little bit of time to work through some of those myths. And if you want more information, our blog that was just published today is available as well. I linked to it, so you can definitely go check that out. So the first myth that we wanted to talk about was that dyslexia isn't very common. So I can't tell you how many times I talk with educators in the classroom who have been teaching for 20 plus years who say things like, well, I've only ever had, you know, two or three students with dyslexia. It's just not very common. The bottom line is, is that it's super common. So depending on what statistics that you look at and what sources you're pulling from, it's anywhere between five and 20% of the population diagnosed with dyslexia. Now I know that sounds like a big range there, and it is. And part of the reason that we have such a big range is because depending on how strict we're being with diagnostic criteria and that standard bell curve and whether we're using one standard deviation or two standard deviations to create that cut score, that can reduce the number of students who would qualify for dyslexia. Now that being said, dyslexia occurs on a continuum. And so because it occurs on a continuum, what happens is we have some students who have very severe dyslexia. And those are the ones that people probably recognize and say, oh yeah, this is a student with dyslexia. But we also have students who have more mild to moderate dyslexia. And sometimes they can fool us because they're compensating really well. And unless we actually look at those underlying diagnostic assessments, you could miss it. It's just that they're working really really hard, and so they could be masking it. And so it's really important to recognize that if we know 5 to 20% of the population could be categorized with dyslexia, we know that if you've been teaching for 20 plus years, or even if not, you have definitely had dyslexic students in your classroom. So dyslexia is highly prevalent, and it's very likely that you do have a handful of students in your class each year who would be considered qualifying for a diagnosis of dyslexia. So we're gonna go ahead and dispel that myth. It is very common. Another common myth that we hear is that dyslexia can't be diagnosed until third grade. I think to some extent where some of that comes from is that in schools, Oftentimes, if we're looking at an IEP or an individualized education program in order to qualify for supports through the school, one of the criteria is that students have to be two grade levels or more behind. And so what happens is, is for a student to be two or more grade levels behind in reading, it's almost third grade before they're going to be identified in that setting. Now that being said, being dyslexic is something that you have your whole life. So it's something that would have been prevalent as early as birth. It's just that we're not required to start reading until five, six years of age. Now that being said, we know that there are a number of indicators that would clue us into dyslexia very early on. So the first one is family history. If we have a family history of dyslexia, that alone is definitely a red flag that we want to be aware of because you're going to be at a much higher risk of having dyslexia if you have a family member with dyslexia. Another thing is, is that if we have students who have struggled with oral language development early on, so that can happen in a few different ways, but articulation being one of them, spoken language, just having difficulty articulating ideas, not necessarily with articulation itself, but just expressively getting those ideas out there and putting sentences together in a syntactically, grammatically correct way, that would be another indicator. Also for really young ones, having difficulty with rhyming or determining how many syllables are in a word, sequencing the alphabet, things like that can all be signs that we may be headed toward a diagnosis later on especially if that is coupled with a family history. Those things alone don't necessarily mean that anything is wrong, but it is a red flag, something to keep in mind. So those are just a couple of the early indicators that we can be looking at, but truly dyslexia can be diagnosed with 95% accuracy by age five and a half if we're looking at that family history, if we're looking at those oral language measures, if we're looking at that phonological awareness, 
and just some of those early pre-reading skills like identifying the alphabet and things like that. So definitely can be diagnosing dyslexia far before third grade. And in fact, the earlier that we can catch this, the more likely we are to completely remediate or completely close the gap for these students because they haven't lost so much instructional time. So it's really important that we don't continue spreading the message that dyslexia can't be diagnosed until third grade. There is a difference between qualifying for school-based supports and qualifying for a clinical diagnosis. We can do that far earlier than third grade. Another common myth that we hear is around vision. So a lot of times, because reading requires that we visually look at print, that people believe that your vision causes dyslexia or that if you have a vision problem, that's going to cause dyslexia. Dyslexia is a language-based learning disability, so it occurs in the language centers of the brain. When we close our eyes, we can still do phonological awareness tasks. So those are going to be tasks like rhyming, determining how many syllables are in a word, determining how many sounds are in a word, blending those sounds together. Those are some of the key hallmarks of dyslexia, and it has nothing to do with vision. Even students who do struggle with more of the letters and show those letter reversals and things like that, which for so long was a really common sign of dyslexia. And some students with dyslexia do have that difficulty with letter reversals and transpositions and words, um, saying them backwards and mixing them up. That can happen, but it's not because of a vision issue. It's because of a processing issue. So they're seeing it in the same way that we're seeing letters and words. It's just that once it gets into that language processing center of the brain, that neural network network isn't functioning in the same way that somebody who didn't have dyslexia would be functioning. So all that to say, if you have an acuity difficulty, if you can't see, you know, if you're looking at words and it's truly blurry, that's definitely going to cause reading struggles. So we absolutely have to rule out that there is an acuity difficulty. Now there can be true difficulties with convergence insufficiency and things like that that, that can happen. Now, that being said, it's far less prevalent than is being diagnosed frequently. And we also have to be aware that if you go to a vision center and they say, we can correct dyslexia, that's just not true because dyslexia is a language-based learning disability. So you need to be working with a speech language pathologist or an educational specialist or somebody who has a background in language-based learning disabilities so so critical that we don't just hand that off to a vision therapist or somebody like that saying oh, okay this will handle it it doesn't it doesn't and that's not to say that there's not value there for other things but it's definitely not a value or it's not an evidence-based treatment for dyslexia so that's a huge myth we've got to stop spreading that one dyslexia is not caused by a vision issue and then the fourth one Super important as well is that students with dyslexia have low IQs or they are less intelligent than anybody else. That's another huge myth. So students who have dyslexia fall on the same standard bell curve of intelligence as everybody else. And so you're going to have the same number of students who have dyslexia that are highly gifted and have very high IQs or who have average IQs as the rest of the population. Now, that being said, we do have some students who have dyslexia who would also have a lower IQ, just like in the rest of the population that doesn't have dyslexia. It falls on the same distribution curve. What's really important is that when we think about how students begin to feel, they begin to feel like they have less intelligence. They will often say, I just must be stupid. I can't figure this out. And what's really important is to make sure that they understand that's not true. Having dyslexia is just like being left-handed. There's nothing wrong with the brain. It's just wired a little bit differently. It doesn't mean that you're any less intelligent or smart than any of your friends or peers. It just means that you learn differently. It's really, really critical that we be very aware of how we're talking about a student's performance because so often what happens is that students hear, you're so smart, so if you just put in more effort, you would be doing fine. And so internally what they know, students with dyslexia are working very, very hard to perform at the same level. And so what they're hearing is, if I were smart, then this would be easy and I wouldn't have to try so hard 
because my teachers or my parents think that I'm not trying hard and I am and I know that I'm trying so hard and they just think that I'm not. So what that must mean is that it comes easy to everybody else. And so they're making those connections. And so it's really, really critical that we really think about that and think about how we're talking with students and recognizing that they may be trying really hard. And even if you've just sounded out a word with your student and they are gonna need to go through that exact same word again, and they're gonna start from scratch again, it doesn't mean that they weren't paying attention or that they didn't care. It just truly, again, is that neural network in the brain is really just taking a detour, it's taking a different route, and it's very difficult for these students. Doesn't mean they're less smart, and it does not mean that they're trying any less hard than their peers in response to reading and writing tasks. So anyway, there you have it. There are our top for misconceptions, I'll go through them one more time. Dyslexia is common. So when people say dyslexia is not very common, it's not a big deal, we don't have very much of that in the schools, myth, that is completely untrue. The second myth is that students cannot be diagnosed until third grade. Also not accurate. We can absolutely diagnose with 95% accuracy by age five and a half. The third is that dyslexia is caused by a vision problem. That is absolutely not true. It is a language-based learning disability. It is not caused by a vision issue at all. And then fourth is that students with dyslexia have lower IQs, which is also not true. Students with dyslexia fall on the same standard continuum, that same standard bell curve of intelligence as the rest of the population. It has zero correlation to intelligence. So if you've been hearing those things, hopefully you feel more confident in dispelling some of those. Again, if you want more information, definitely check out the blog in the comments, and we'd love to hear what you think. Bye, guys.